and happy Easter, everybody.
Well, good morning and happy Easter. Christ is risen. Amen. One more time. Christ is risen. Amen. Welcome to Woodland United Methodist Church. Welcome, Knights Landing, worshiping with us online. A couple of them are here. We won't say, um, we won't put you on camera. Uh, we are so glad that you're all here to worship. All who are worshiping in different parts of our community and the world watching on YouTube, we're glad that you're with us. We are so blessed to be here on this beautiful day. What a day God has given us um, for this morning. Might it only be better, Brian and Shannon Mustachi just texted me. Uh, pictures of church on the beach in Hawaii. <laughs> Nothing like rubbing it in. Um, but we've got a pretty amazing day here after the last few weeks of weather. We're so blessed. Um, I hope you'll go outside this afternoon and enjoy. A um, couple things. Uh, first of all, if you notice the cross and the flowers, you're thinking, well, there needs to be more flowers. That's where you come in. So after I light the Christ candle, we will have three hymns for us to sing and celebrate, and during that time, you will be invited to come flower the cross. Now, if you're thinking, I didn't bring any flowers, that's okay. Um, uh, Marcy got us started. She got this all set up for us. Thank you, Marcy, for your hard work. And then Samantha got us flowers from Strelitzia uh, Flowers. They donate flowers every year, and so there's a bunch of flowers. We have some scissors if, you know, the stems are, sometimes the stems long work, sometimes you got to trim them whatever. We'll have some folks up here to help, and there's a green waste can, and we'll, we'll resurrect, if you will. Life will come to this chicken wire cross, and it will be beautiful. Now, we're going to roll it, not way over there, but kind of over here. We have a lot more room these days. We'll roll it a little bit over here, and then after service, I know a lot of folks like to take pictures in front of it. Um, I know our family has a photo every year in front of the cross, um, and so we're just glad that you're here, and if you haven't been here in a while, we're um, even more glad that you're here. Uh, what a blessing for you to be part of worship today um, on this glorious, glorious day. And I'm glad to be back. Uh, last Sunday, I got our family, we were able to have Palm Sunday at the Tower of London. Kind of cool. Um, a little weird, but pretty amazing as well, right? It's like where they killed all these people, but then celebrating life. It was interesting, but a beautiful thing, and we're glad to be back. Um, it's been a beautiful Holy Week. And so, Let's begin with lighting of the Christ candle. Sorry, Randy and the camera folks, but we're moving all around here. Um, would you bow with me as we enter this space of worship? God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to come and celebrate life, to celebrate resurrection. Not just this historical thing. That's, that's really the least of it, God. It's really to celebrate the resurrection that you do in us each and every day. And so, God, we thank you for that. We thank you for your presence. And we light this candle, God, as a symbol of your presence, as a symbol of your life and light shining in and through us today. Might we worship you with all that we have today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we are going to start with the flowering of the cross. And so um, our first song is He Lives. It's 310 in the hymnal. It's on the screens. Um, stand, sit, walk forward, come. Let's flower our cross. Oh, 
we, Kathy, we, I think we got it just right, timing. Yeah, Last year we had, we had one, not enough songs, right? We were short <laughs> a song. So this year we added a third one. Well, let's continue worshiping. We're going to slide our cross over. If anybody's out there going, I wish it had more flowers, feel free during the next hymn to add some more. But we're going to roll it over there. Justin's going to come help us. But stand as you are able and body your spirit. Our Easter hymn, 302, Christ the Lord is risen today. This is one of those ones. Got to sing out. Christ the Lord is risen today, alleluia. Earth and heaven in chorus sing, alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth. you bow with me. God, we thank you for resurrection. We thank you for new life. We thank you for gathering us today. God, would you meet us in this place, wherever you find us, God. We all come from different places and spaces with different thoughts and doubts, and um, our faith is all in a different place on this journey. Would you meet us in those places? Would you meet us with your love and your grace and your mercy today? As we worship you, as we celebrate this day, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Kids, Chugi is here today. Come on up. Come on, kids. I know there's a few of you out there. see your hat and Maddie you have a very interesting Easter bonnet on <laughs> it's really an Easter hat hi how are you I'm so glad you're here I'm so glad everybody's here because it's Easter it isn't the floral cross beautiful it's so nice and and it's great to see you well, Chugi, did you read the scripture today? Oh, I sure did because, oh, I wanted to read the scripture from East for Easter. 
and, and, and it, it's the story of, of, of Easter Sunday morning in, in Mark's gospel. And what did it say? Well, it, it, it said that three ladies went to the tomb. Mary, Mary, and Salome. Well, very good. I'm glad you remember all those names. Oh, I sure did. And you know what really made me, what made me think? It was women that went. It, there were no men that went. And, and it was women. That's as special as if a lion went. Do you really think so, Chugi? Oh, I know, because they found there that the tomb was empty and Jesus was alive and had risen. Oh, that's so special. I want to say, hallelujah. Well, it was pretty special. And, 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 and it's special because that means God's love is alive. And I want you always remember on Easter Sunday and every Sunday that God loves you, each and every one of you. God loves you very much, and I hope you remember that always. Well, thank you, Chugi. Would you like to lead us in a prayer? Oh, I sure would. Let's pray together. We thank you, God, for the joy and for the love of Easter. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Happy Easter to you, and you can go back to be with your families, or go to Sunday school too if you'd like. Bye. Amen. And just a reminder, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, kids, there is an Easter egg hunt. At, so you meet at the Sunday school room at just after service, and there will be an Easter egg hunt. Our Sunday school teachers have been working hard on preparing that. And so be sure to have, if your kids are in service, um, during service, that's great. And just bring your kids over there if they want to participate just down the hall after service. And then for us adults, um, we have hot cross buns. Hot, fresh, baked hot cross buns in the social hall. So stay for a few minutes. Enjoy those. Um, you know, I kind of heard of those. And then in England, they're everywhere. I mean, they're even at gas stations right now. Like everywhere. This is like a thing. That's how they celebrate Easter. So we're excited to get to have these fresh ones. Um, thank you, Michelle, for baking those. And what a day we're going to have. So let's continue worshiping. Our hymn of praise is Mighty to Save. It's in the worship and songbook, or it's on the screen, 3038. Salvation, he rose and 
singing good today, church. I tell you. Well, we continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings, so I want to invite our ushers to come. The ushers will come down the middle and side aisles into the library and have the plates, and you can give to support the ministries of the church that way, or you can give through the mail, through our website, umcwoodland.org. But as you give, our Glory Shakers Bell Choir will be giving you a gift, a gift of music as they um, play for you, crown him with many crowns. So let's give and let's receive. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power of bliss. Praise the Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that have been given today, for all the ways that people give of themselves, Lord, their time, their talents, their treasures. We thank you. Would you take these gifts and bless them and multiply them and use them to touch lives? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our worship today with our uh, praises of the people, the prayers of the people and the Lord's Prayer. So 
So a bunch, of, not a lot, but prayer requests came in this week via our prayer chain, and I'll share those, and then I'll pray and invite you in a few minutes to join me in the Lord's Prayer. So uh, just a few prayer requests. Rich Sakai and Joy, we've been praying for Joy, and so this prayer request was prayers for strength and healing, and praise God, Joy is here, and she updated me last night. She's doing really well, and the surgery went um, as well as more than expected, right? It was just a great outcome, so praise God for that. Um, Loretta Frank asked for prayers for Marilyn Mitchell. She's a member of St. John's um, UCC. She's discovered the cancer, and she has surgery scheduled for April 11th. So um, she's in the hospital in pain and very weak, and so let's be praying for Marilyn Mitchell. I imagine some folks know her as our churches are fairly connected. And then um, Samantha Whitlam, my wife, asked for prayers for her grandma, uh, for, for Grammy, that's what we call her, grandmother, seems so strange to call her that, Grammy, uh, Betty, who's been in the hospital now for about a week, she's had a number of issues come up, um, and so she's doing pretty good, last we talked yesterday was up and, and eating and doing great, but be praying for Betty and for family um, on this, this journey with her. And then Susan Slover Murphy texted me last night just that she wishes she could be here, but she's been having some lung inflammation, right, Michael, and so not feeling well. So prayers for, um, for her that God would heal that as she's um, not feeling great. And then a praise, a big giant praise. We have a permit for our bathroom, right? You'd, you'd think we landed people on the moon, but in Woodland, it might be the same, um, God bless our contractor, Chris, who, I don't know if he wanted to come today, he felt so, he feels so bad, he said, he said, pass along to the church, my apologies, I said, well, it's not your fault, although he said there are footprints of his on the desk at City Hall, and so we have a permit, so within two weeks, construction should start again, um, so praise God for that, and pray for the completion of our bathroom that's just, you know, and it's, and if you're wondering, all projects in Woodland are in this sort of stop and start state. So it is what it is. So we're just be praise God for that. But I wanted to share that today because I got that news yesterday. So praise God. Well, let's go to God in prayer. Uh, I'll pray and then I'll invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is in your bulletin and on the screens. So let's pray. God, we thank you for your love and grace today. We thank you that you are present with us in our joys as we celebrate something as um, simple as a permit. And, and we know in the grand scheme of this world, um, our bathroom, as inconvenient as it's been, it's not as difficult as what so many folks are dealing with, God. And so we thank you that you're also involved in those difficult things. And so we pray for those today in our midst who are struggling with health, um, who are battling cancer, who are recovering from injury and surgery who are dealing with sickness, Lord, we pray that you would be with them. For those who are just struggling, who are feeling down and discouraged, and they don't feel that hope um, of resurrection life, God, I pray you would meet them in those spaces, and they would know your love. Lord, be with us as a church as we continue to try to bring life to this community, as we continue to try to love and share all that you've given to us. Walk with us and help us to be what you want us to be. And now, Lord, I ask that you would lead us as we, together, your church, pray this prayer that you've taught us to pray. Our oh Father, God, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, let's continue to worship. Our hymn of preparation is number 311 in the hymnal. It's also on the screens. Now the green blade riseth. Let's sing. Who had 
that sleeps on stream. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. Lord, he came at Easter like the risen grain. Jesus, who for three days in the grave had lain, quick from the morning, Woodland United Methodist family. <clears throat> when the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought perfumed oils so that they could anoint Jesus. Very early, just after sunrise, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked, they found that the huge stone had been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young person sitting at the right, dressed in a white robe. They were very frightened, but the youth reassured them, do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified. He has risen, he is not here. See the place where they laid him. Now go and tell the disciples and Peter, Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee, where you will see him just as he told you. They made their way out and fled from the tomb, bewildered and trembling. But they said nothing to anyone because they were so afraid.
Wow. Amen. Amen. Bells, choir, singers, church. Wow. I'm going to go home and say amen, and I don't need to preach after that. Um, I guess I was off last week, so I will. But um, amen. Obviously, this is a big day. It's the grand finale, right? Um, actually, though, it's the start, really. Um, we are not Good Friday people. We're not I mean, we're Holy Thursday people, but really we're Easter people. That's what this holiday, that's what this entire thing is um, that we do here every single week and in our lives and in our community is about resurrection. It's about new life. It's about God doing stuff in and through us. And so today we come to that resurrection. And I want to set the stage for the scripture um, that J.R. read so you kind of get a sense of where we find these three women in this scene today. So we know that Jesus at this point has been crucified. He was stabbed with the spear in his side to hurry up the process um, because, you know, they didn't want him hanging up there for Sabbath. Wouldn't be appropriate, right? Not that the crucifixion, you know, these these weird religious things. Um, They took him down. Joseph of Arimathea, a member of the Sanhedrin, offers up a family tomb. Hastily, they wrap him in some cloth, put him in the tomb, roll the stone. Mark, of course, in Mark's gospel, which is what we're looking at this year, um, mentions these women multiple times. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. These three women, these three women who stood by Jesus at the crucifixion, at his final death, and now they play the key witnesses to resurrection. And we talk about this each year, how um, At that time, in a court of law, women were not considered valid witnesses. So it would be odd for the gospel writers to sort of say, well, we're going to make up this elaborate scheme, but use women as the witnesses. Um, So these women were there. And they experienced this. And so, but at this point, the disciples, many of Jesus' followers, not just those twelve, but I think a lot of the followers were scattered. Right? You've been following this leader who's been doing all of these things. We have this triumphant entry, right? Last Sunday, Palm Sunday, Jesus comes in on this donkey to fanfare and hosannas, and now he's dead. Now what? Given up three, of my, three years of my life to follow you, Jesus, and now what? So we can't get upset at the disciples for not being there. They're terrified. They're confused. So there is, they're, they're in a place of fear, uncertainty, and those questions of where do we go from here and what do we do? I think we've found ourselves in those places before, haven't we? Places of fear, places of uncertainty, places of where in the world do I go from here? Um, I, I, you've been there, haven't you? Yeah. Sometimes those questions come all of a sudden. Life is going good and then... What do we do from here? How do we handle that news, that diagnosis, that word from your boss, from your spouse, from your family, from your children? Where do we go from there? And so that's where we find ourselves with the followers of Jesus. And so when the Sabbath was over, so the next day, Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of James, and Salome, they bring spices because they really want to take care of what was not done the proper preparation of Jesus' body. They want to properly wrap him, prepare him for um, that time in the tomb. And so apart from these women, the the people aren't there. There were crowds on Palm Sunday, fanfare galore, shouting what? Hosanna, King! And then on Friday they were shouting what? Crucify him, right? So easy to switch and basically, Jesus didn't do what they wanted, so we're moving on from you. You didn't take up swords. You didn't take up weapons. You didn't free us from oppression, so now we're going to move on from you. So the Mark text says that these women have come to anoint the body, to finish it. Matthew says they simply come to look at the tomb. And so why are they there? Besides this sort of fun- fundamental task, maybe that was just the excuse But there's this devotion, isn't there? There's this love and longing. Certainly somebody else could have taken care of Jesus, the body, but they want to be there. They didn't have all the answers. 
nor did they fully know what was happening, but they kept pressing forward in faith. And I share this, this sort of thought each Easter because it's important. They kept moving forward in faith. That's what faith is sometimes. It's this movement, this journey. When they didn't have a clear vision, they moved forward because they had love. They didn't have all of the answers, but they kept moving forward. And I think that's a great picture of faith, um, that these women put one foot in front of the other, and even when things don't seem right, even when there's great fear, even when there's great trembling and all of this stuff, they move forward. And of course, we know that faith is easy when things are great, but when things are really, really hard, faith can be hard. And so they're on this journey. And I want to say that for a second, and I say this a lot, but faith is just that, a journey, isn't it? And I believe every single person here this morning is on a faith journey, regardless of why you're here. And you might be like, well, pastor, I'm here because, you know, my parents are like, you're coming to church today. Um, or your spouse said, you're coming to church today. It's Easter for goodness sakes, right? I was that person. Growing up, I did not like going to church. If the bulletin thing didn't have enough place to draw on it, you know, um, I didn't want to be there as a, as a, young, as a child. Um, so faith is a journey, but I think we're all on the journey. Uh, so often in our journeys like this, we're really concerned with having all the answers, having all the outcomes right. Some of you don't go on a trip unless you have everything planned, right? Everything. I have spreadsheets. Um, Pat and I drove our motorcycles across the Canadian border a couple summers ago, and he was in front of me, and he was getting like CIA interrogated by the Mounties. It's really intense going to Canada. You wouldn't think. It seemed like they're friendly. Um, and really intense. And he, they said, well, where are you going from here? He goes, I don't know. He's got it. And then he goes, hold on. And he pulled out the spreadsheet. And the guy goes, he wrote that, huh? Yeah. Um, so some of us love that. We need to know the answers. Others are like, nah, whatever, just getting on the plane. As long as I got, you know, Tom with me, I'll be fine. Um, we like to have the answers, though, when it comes to faith, don't we? We like to have the road map figured out. We want to know what's going on. Like those disciples, we need to know what happened, Jesus. You died. We need to know. I know you talked about tearing down the temple and rebuilding it, and you talked about death and all of these things, but that neither here nor there now because you're dead. But these women move forward. They don't have all the answers. Sometimes we're like, well, I have questions, so I can't believe. I have doubts, so I can't have faith. I don't believe all the stuff that that church believes, so I can't believe any of the stuff. And let me tell you that faith is often a movement forward despite doubt, despite questions, despite unbelief. I promise you, if you're new here, or you haven't been here in a while, or this is something new for you, that there are as many beliefs about Jesus as there are people in this room. And that's okay. That's what's wonderful. And we don't try to compare ourselves to each other because if you do, you either become sad because I'm not whatever or you become prideful because you're not whatever. Faith is a movement forward. These women are great examples of faith without seeing, trusting without knowing, and hope when there are dark days around them. And so very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, right? they don't even know how they're going to get into the tomb. I'd have had on my spreadsheet. <laughs> Call strong people to roll away stone. They said, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? So very early on that Sunday morning, they go. They risked going, of course. They could be arrested. They could be put on trial. They don't know. What would stop them from being crucified if they're associated with Jesus? Right? But when they looked up, they get to the, to the tomb, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. The stone's been rolled away. I don't think, as we'll see at this point, they didn't, it, that didn't instill more faith. That instilled more confusion more fear. What has happened to him? Did somebody come and take the body? Did the Romans, did the, the leaders that crucified him, did they come take the body? What is going on? 
but they go forward anyway. They move forward anyway. See, faith is never a perfect movement forward. It just moves at times, a little bit. So they enter the tomb, and they see a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. The actual Greek is like startled, shocked, terrified, afraid, amazed. And of course, the young man says, don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Don't be afraid. He gives them comfort. And I love that in Scripture, time and time again, just before the good news is shared, and good news is about to be shared here, it always is preceded by one short sentence. Don't be afraid. I have good news. Don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you will name him John. Don't be afraid, Mary. Don't be afraid, shepherds. I bring you good news of great joy. Don't be afraid, Joseph. Take Mary as your wife. Her baby is conceived by the Holy Spirit. Name him Jesus. He's going to save all the people from their sins. Don't be afraid, the angel says. Fear is an interesting thing in our world. Fear is everywhere today. People are stoking fear left and right. Left and right, fear is being stoked. And it it drives our hate and our violence. It drives our divisions. It drives our greed, our fear. Um, It drives a lot of things. But Jesus constantly comes to our fear and says, don't be afraid because there is good news. We make up fear where there is no fear, right? I mean, the, the boat that hit the bridge, this obvious, now it's like a big thing, big scandal. Somebody's trying to, you know, fear. We make stuff up. They say, don't be afraid. You are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Now, here's the good news. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? Do you imagine hearing those words? Like, could you say that again? He is risen. Well, we know he's not here, but he is risen. He is risen. What an interesting interchange. He is risen. He has defeated death. He did what he said he would do. He is truly who he said he was. He is the reason why you should not fear. He is risen. This is indeed good news for the whole world. And yet they don't see Jesus, so now we're still in the trust me moment, aren't we? We're still in the faith, because he's not standing there. He's not glowing. Some of the other gospel accounts have him there. He's not there. He offers good news, but he also offers a moment of faith, too. He says, go and tell the other disciples and Peter. I love that. Why? Peter needed to know. Peter denied Jesus. Peter was in a moment of shame and grief and failure. Tell Peter. Peter really needs to know. He really needs to know. Jesus is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as you were told. Just go. Go and tell the disciples. Go and tell Peter. Go and tell the disciples. And I love that this angel figure is calling them disciples. Because what do disciples do? They follow, don't they? But these disciples are hiding in fear. And so I love that this definition of disciple is not how we might define disciple. A disciple of Jesus is a follower of Jesus who doesn't always follow. A disciple, a follower of Jesus is not one who follows in a straight line. A disciple or a follower of Jesus is one who often doubts, strays, stops, starts, has spits and sputters, and gets angry. All the while, you're still a disciple. I love that. You know, the prodigal son was always the son, right? Was always the child. No matter how far the prodigal son ran, was always the child. Go and tell. This is good news. I might note that go and tell. This angel gives these women the task to go preach. So if you have issues with women preachers, well, to take it up with Jesus and that angel. Um, Go and preach. Trembling and bewildered, they went out and fled from the tomb. And I wish it said that they were so confident that they held a rally and they preached to thousands and they all just, no, what does it say? They said nothing to anyone because they were what? Afraid. They were afraid. 
there's sort of this cliffhanger to the story, right? What a strange, the credits roll, and you're like, well, what? No. It's a great cliffhanger because we know that that's what faith is. Now, there's some later versions of this text where it says they went and told, but I think that's because some writers along, you know, through the centuries are like, well, we just can't let it end like this. Doesn't, right? This is a terrible show. No, that is faith. They eventually see Jesus. They eventually get to worship with Jesus and touch and feel and be at His feet and eat and drink and have just a wonderful time with Him. You see, I think faith brought those women to that tomb. Faith was with them as they were afraid. Faith was with the disciples in the upper room. Faith was with Peter when he denied Jesus. I even think faith was with Judas as Judas did not, not only denied, but betrayed Jesus. And we know that Judas went on to kill himself, the Scripture says. I know one preacher said, what if he'd waited three days? All right. What if he'd waited? And I believe Judas was met with open arms. See, faith brought us here today. Even if you don't recognize it or understand it or believe it, faith brings us here today. It's good news today. Good news began at that birth, in that manger. Continued through Jesus' life as He loved the unlovable, healed the broken, freed those captive, touched those unworthy people, spent time with those sinners. The good news that hung on a cross, that faced down an eternity of sin, that faced down empire, that faced down death, faced down hatred. And while in, on that cross did what? Forgave. Forgave. The good news says that death is not the end. Sin and death don't have the last word. Good news is that despite denial, betrayal, fear, and doubt, we are forgiven, reconciled, and called disciples. Brothers and sisters of Christ. Good news is that faith and discipleship is not a straight line. If you tracked my faith journey on a line, it would not be a straight line up. It would look like someone having serious heart issues. Right? Just all. And it might look like death at times, but it's still faith. And God is still present, and it's still good news. The good news is that the resurrection isn't just an event that happened 2,000 years ago, but it happens every single day as we enter that faith journey. That's what Easter is. Jesus is alive. It is good news. Come and see and go and tell. And I leave you with two, two bits of Scripture. One, it says, ask, seek, and knock. And actually, it should say, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. It's in the imperfect. Keep on keeping on. Keep on doing this. That's faith. And then my final, final Scripture is, from the one who met Jesus, and he said, do you believe? And he says, um, I believe, but help my unbelief. That's faith. That's what we do here at this church and a lot of our brother and sister churches is we try to figure out this faith journey on its own. And each day, those things in us that need to be resurrected are resurrected in little ways, even if we try to keep snuffing them down. The stones keep rolling away. Jesus is alive in and through us. Let's pray. God, thank You that Easter is not just a day to remember, not just one day on the calendar, not just a season on the calendar, but it's a journey that we're all on. Thank You for the good news of resurrection. Thank You for the good news that I don't have to be perfect to follow after You. Thank You for the good news that I don't even have to understand all this to experience the life that you want for us. Thank you, God. Resurrect in each of us today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for our closing hymn. It's in the faith we sing, 2115, or on the screens. Christ has risen. Um, I'm going to stay up here this, this morning, and, and I invite you after service to come to the cross to go have fellowship, hot cross buns, and enjoy each other's company. Let's worship God. Christ has risen while I slumber. Christ has risen where hope died. As He said and as He promised, as we doubted, Let the moon embrace the blessing, let the stars
Would you bow with me for the benediction? May the love of Christ, may the good news of resurrection be alive in you today. May God meet you on that journey and move you forward just a little bit more. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. If you want to come take photos, kids, Easter egg hunt in a few minutes, Sunday school room down the hall, uh, hot cross buns and fellowship in there. God bless you. Have an amazing Easter. Oh, 12 o'clock Spanish language service right here.